camp for about, I guess, seven months. That was in the eastern mountains of Kentucky. And then I was interrogated for two nights in a locked building by a supervisor who told me that if they let me go, what would I say to people in public? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, if the U.S. were invaded by an alien or foreign power, where would my allegiance lie? And then he asked me what I knew about the Illuminati and the government and what I would say to people. And he said to me, you know, if you were to go out and say certain things, we can claim that you are mentally insane and put you in a mental institution for the rest of your life. So, of course, I told them what they wanted to hear. Sure. And I was going to get myself out of there. Now, mind you, even though it was a prison camp, I was in charge of the education department of the prison camp. <laughs> and, in fact, I was teaching classes on the language of hyperspace that I learned at Montauk and giving it to, not to, to the prisoners at this camp were politicians. There was the governor of West Virginia. There were state senators. There was all kinds of high-ranking officials from all over. Uh, wait, this is, uh, this is mind-blowing or maybe mind-expanding. Well, and the, the deal was I had to give them a lesson plan every time I taught a class, which was about two or three times a week. Right. And then they'd review it and listen to the class as I would do it. And, in fact, there were times when I would have the class in a visualization or meditation, and it would be quite silent, and over the loudspeaker they would, they would play that Twilight Zone music. Uh-huh. You know, do 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 yeah. like that. yeah. So it was a big joke to them, but they was also letting me know they were listening. Now, wait a minute. You're saying, let's just say the governor of West Virginia. Was, yes. was he there in the prison camp yes, as a he prisoner? He was an inmate. He was an inmate. Well, yes. what was happening in West Virginia when he was there? Well, all I can tell you is West Virginia must have a lot of corrupt government because half the state was in this place. Ah. The state senators, the governor, police chiefs, I mean, you name it. They were in this place. They were there. Yeah. And then they finally sent me to a camp in central Pennsylvania at the top of another mountain. And there I was again in charge of the uh, education department. Mm -hmm. And I was also in charge or helped monitor um, for the National Weather Service. So I would take readings for them and transmit the, the information because there was no... Uh, stations in the area that were reliable. And okay. so I did that for about a year. Okay. There again, teaching classes, um, doing all kinds of things for the, uh, for the inmates there, meeting with the prison camp and penitentiary education department and giving them uh, my ideas of how to educate people there. And then I was finally sent, guess where, to the Philadelphia Naval Yard. No. Coming full circle. Okay. And, and what year was this again? That was now early 94. By the time I. No, excuse me. That was October 93 when I finally got to the Philadelphia Naval Yard. 93 October. And I was there till uh, uh, spring of 94. Anything interesting happened there? Well, there I was placed uh, in charge of um, recycling material, and my supervisor there was a lady. Um, who, uh, I, I guess she had some kind of a romantic interest in me or some, she would, she would call me into her office constantly and, um, was a little too close for comfort, mm -hmm. for all I can say. Mm -hmm. Now, what she told me was, and now I never solicited any of this information, she just told me that she knew that underneath the base were tunnels that led to various parts of the country. Mm -hmm and that in various parts of the country, she was in charge of shipping materiel that was being stored in case of a national emergency in the future. Now, do you think she was trying to get remote, uh, romantically linked to you to control you, or it just happened that way? It's been my experience in my life that they have sent many women into my life as my handlers or controllers. Right, and your program to... Respond. Respond immediately, right? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Wow. And, and you think she was one of them, right? Oh, I'm pretty sure that she was. Mm -hmm. But then why would she have told you about these tunnels? Many of the times, I would, many of these handlers or controllers each provide me with bits of information designed to trigger certain programming in me uh -huh. or to hook up to the reciprocal information that I already have. It, it, it almost sounds as if you're a conduit, uh, a tuning rod, or something for the balancing of energy within this planet. Well, that's very curious that you said that because one of the things I teach in my lectures and seminars is how to balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain uh -huh. and the energy system. And I was pretty much an expert in that, but I was also considered an expert in alien civilizations. And very often, when there'd be a crash or some kind of activity where there was an artifact left, an artifact meaning part of a body, an object, what have you, mm -hmm. I would be shown either that body part or, or pictures of it and asked to identify the species. And that I did up until about... Uh, 91 or 2. And how did you know, Stuart? How did you know? I knew since I was three years old when I was brought to that platform about the species that were involved in creating life on this planet and what that whole scenario was about and how it's failed. And so this whole world, everybody on it, is an experiment or part of an experiment. And everyone on this planet is an alien to it because life here is not natural. It was either brought here or created on it. Wow. You, you know what comes to mind, Stuart, is, is I've heard many people say that if our entire DNA was activated, we would have all the knowledge that we would need. We would know everything. Well, you know, 97% of all DNA, whether you're an amoeba, an alien, or an elephant, mm -hmm. is identical. Hmm. Now, science calls it junk DNA. But that 97% is the foundational mind pattern of what you would call God mind. Right. It's only the three remaining percent that differentiates species and individuals. But is yours more activated or connected than, say, the, the average person here? Is that how you have this knowledge? Well, a couple of things. Number one, human beings only use 10% of their brain. We've heard that. And so... I teach people how to open up the other 90%. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you consider it fortunate or not, because of what I've been through, a large percentage of my mind pattern is opened and available. And when that happens, it correspondingly opens up the related DNA sequences. Have you had a lot of success with this? Very much so, and I teach classes in this. Uh-huh. And um, looking at your website, and we're going to provide links to your website uh, off the CD, um, I see you have a lot of classes. Yes. Uh, and, but various different types of classes. Right, because there's language of hyperspace, there's DNA, there's healing techniques, simultaneous existence, all different aspects of opening up the mind pattern. Now, how would one feel comfortable going to your class after hearing the story of how you were controlled? Um, well, that's a very common question, and it's a good question. Okay. And so I say, don't listen to the messenger, listen to the message. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was programmed, I was genetically manipulated, what have you. That doesn't alter the value of the information. One and one is two, no matter if I tell you or Adolf Hitler tells you, it's the same valid information. And so the information that I teach about color codes and archetypes and hyperspace sentences, all of that is quite valid, and I encourage people to really study it for themselves. I only provide the tools. Mm -hmm. I don't make it happen for you. I tell you what you can do for yourself to open it up, and, Stuart, and it's up to each individual. Okay, Stuart, what do people do with these tools? They find out who and what they are. They find the truth of them? That's correct. Not that it comes from me or anyone else, but it'll come from themselves. They will actually access it themselves. Hmm. I could, I could see two things happening. I could see one becoming enlightened and accepting and loving. I could see another upon realizing who they are and perhaps becoming fearful um, and not handling it very well. Well, that is because of the conditioning that people have been through. Right. People are designed to identify themselves with their problem. 
they're too fat, they're too short, they don't have enough money, they never find a parking space. That's how they identify.